Hey what's up guys, it's Oakley and the Rise of Mordor Alpha is coming back at us. It's a new release with updated content. So what you'll be seeing here is going to be two full rosters. It's going to be Gondor and Dale uh, and then a couple of kind of additional units from various in progress factions. Um, but basically this is something that was released to myself, a couple YouTubers and I think a fair amount of other people. Uh, but it's still kind of reserved. So we're going to be flipping through the different units here, obviously starting with Dale. Love the custom units made by Impremi. Keep an eye out on all of these kind of units that are created from his own mind. So a fair amount of these are going to be kind of picked out of the movie or whatever reference sources, but units like the Shipmen, anything from uh, Vinland Guards to Vinland Watchers, uh, Yard Patrollers and things like that, all of those are straight from Impremi's mind, which is awesome to see. They look really freaking good. I did a two-part uh, interview with him kind of going over you know, how does he make his artwork? Where does he derive uh, inspiration from? What is his process? Because it's all really interesting. So, for instance, this unit, no mention in the lore and no art to refer to. So, he created this from scratch, and it's really interesting to hear how he derived from little patches of lore and how he created a cohesive unit model to represent where they come from. So, for instance, here, uh, the Lake Town Guard is another one that he did. Uh, and this one looks really good. Picked pretty much straight out of the movie and we did do a, a video documentary on that I do recommend you check it out but these other uh, Dalian units looking great uh, obviously these guys like I said were picked out of the movie but the other ones uh, kind of the way Impremi did it is he used units that were representative of the regions they came from so the Vinland Guards are from a region famous for the wine and so he gave them a lot of purple and green and then put little emeralds and coloring in them uh, and then on top of that, you have an assortment of cavalry. Merchant escorts, for instance, are a kind of a made-up unit, but it makes sense if Dale is going to be a big trading power, they're going to need units to escort their caravans. Dale cavalry regiments, there's a lot of open ground around Dale, so it makes sense for them to have developed some form of cavalry. Um, so you'll be seeing those guys here. And that's kind of how these rosters that are otherwise scant in the lore were fleshed out. The Rovanian regents are another good example of this, where the team kind of just filled in the gaps. To, to, to create this elite unit. Uh, next we move over to Gondor where this is awesome. They have kind of all the fiefs represented. So first we have coast levies of Anfalas and you'll notice that the banners are all custom for them. The Pelar gear marines here looking really cool. The banners themselves I think are all custom made. Uh, and notice how they have kind of a, an element from the main Gondorian flag but then they twist it somehow um, which is cool. Uh, I'm glad they represented all the different fiefs and weren't you know scared to make them different. Also it's worth mentioning that uh, Mr. J uh, I believe was the one who crafted most of these although he did have some help but I can't remember who his second in command was. Uh, Archers of the Black Root Vale are a cool unit from the lore. They are really skilled and renowned archers who came to the Battle of Pelennor Fields and were contributed from one of the fiefs. Then you have the Thillian Rangers, you have the main body of Gondorian archers here picked straight out of the movie and I do have to give them credit. These look awesome especially look at the officer there. He looks great. Uh, next, we have a couple more infantrymen. Helmen of Lamedun, uh, Lamedun, excuse me, also making an appearance at the Battle of Pelennor Fields. Um, their covering is a little bit different. They have more of a look kind of like uh, wild men. Uh, Warriors of Sarnak, these guys are supposed to be famous axemen. That's how they come into battle. Um, pretty cool to see them here. And their representation for their little flag has uh, the White Tree of Gondor with axes on it. <laughs> so deriving from what little scant lore we have and they kind of extrapolate it out from there. Gondor Sword Militia also making an appearance, kind of the sword and buckler, weak-ish troops, you'd imagine they're going to get cut down pretty easily by the forces of evil. Ringo Vale Men at Arms, again another fief uh, force that does come to the aid of Gondor. Uh, these guys obviously looking a little different. Uh, and then the Gondor Sword Infantry, once again, what you'd expect from the film. And Mr. J did a really good job polishing these guys up. Compared to the original release, I think these definitely kicked it up a notch in terms of the detail and all that. Peneth Gelim Spearman. I'm glad they not only played around with kind of look, but also the colors. So green there, um, which is good. I do hope they add a little bit more colors and pageantry to the units. And we're starting to see hints of that. I mean, if you look at the Citadel Guard, this is kind of a made-up unit in the sense of its looks. Uh, but it looks awesome. A lot of elements here taken from... Um, basically the the older days of Gondor, old helms, old crests, the fountain guards as well, a lot of Numenorean uh, emblems and regalia on them. Then you have Gondor cavalry, 
These guys are kind of to be expected. And then you have the Knights of the Silver Swan. These guys look awesome, looking freaking great. They're supposed to be some of the best cavalry in Middle Earth. Very glorious uh, heritage from Numenor, and they come from uh, the Bay of Velfalas around there. Uh, I was hoping they would have a little bit more pageantry, kind of like what we see in the Third Age mod for Medieval 2. Next, we have an assortment of other units, the Haradrin Swordsmen. These guys are the same that we'd seen previously in a release. Then the Dragon Skin units from the Easterlings. Then we have Urukai Pikes, very representative and uh, iconic for Isengard, despite the lore not really mentioning Pikes, I don't think. Uh, then here we have the Urukai Swordsmen. We did see these models before. I do think they were touched up a little bit, looking awesome and badass. I assume more Urukai are going to be coming to the field. We'll probably see Berserkers and Crossbowmen uh, and a bunch of other units like Wogs. Then we have here some Dwarfs, Grim Hammers, uh, pulled kind of straight out of the Hobbit movie, and then the Spear Guards of Erebor, looking really sick. I love the helmets and the shields. They look baller. And then also what's really cool is the fact that they're able to kind of create shrunken dwarves, bring down the model size to make them suitably tiny, which is great. I was uh, a little bit unsure if they'd be able to pull it off, but uh, I'm glad to see they did. So anyways, that's an overview of what you'll be seeing in the days to come in terms of content from me. I'll be doing battles and whatnot and expect more lore. Speaking of that, make sure to check out all my previous, previous videos on the history of the Lake Town Guard and Premies Q&A. And yeah, that's it. Thanks so much for watching. See you in the next one.